Thank you, Tony, as always. Um, thank you, Kat, and thank you to Loyola. It's always coming home to come here um, and to be in this beautiful space. And welcome to all the Quello Fellows. Um, I know you did that because it rhymes together. Uh, there's no like Garcetti anything, so they can't quite do it. But it's such an honor to be here as the mayor of the city of Los Angeles, the city of angels. Um, and I hope whether you're lucky enough to be from here or just smart enough to have come here for this, that you enjoy the city as your city. It really, when I became mayor, I thought, what was my ultimate goal? You want to make a more just world. You want to provide more opportunities for people. You want to make sure that you build the city of tomorrow and the infrastructure. But it really boiled down to me to a very simple thing that took me about a year or two uh, to arrive at. We talk a lot about diversity. That word is okay. It can describe a buffet or a group of people. Um, inclusion is a little bit better word, but I don't like it because it implies that somebody has power to include somebody with less power. And so for me, what I arrived at is the theme of what I've tried to build as mayor of Los Angeles and just as in my public service, inspired uh, by people like Tony Coelho, is belonging. A city of belonging and a world of belonging. Because belonging implies we all have equal status and that we all belong where we are. We all belong, whether it's in a position, like you belong, I hope one day, as a mayor or as a member of Congress, as a judge or a justice, uh, as a powerful attorney, you belong. But also in terms of place, it doesn't matter your zip code, it doesn't matter your ability, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, it doesn't matter how much income your parents have or your even immigration status, you belong. In this city, while you're here and hopefully increasingly through your work, we will build a world where everybody has that sense of belonging. And this was long before the last few years we've seen this pull where everybody feels increasingly like they don't belong. And the politics of the world that we live in right now are about trying to point out where people don't belong rather than how we can include. And I'm so indebted to the work of Tony Coelho who's right up there when you think about Martin Luther King, when you think about the folks that have taken in racial justice, uh, people like Gloria Steinem, um, Susan B. Anthony who in this country have moved forward gender justice, when you think about folks who have fought for LGBTQ equality, uh, Tony Coelho is one of these folks that should be in that handful of names and that you will continue to be able to bear his name and the fellowship and the work that you do, I hope is an inspiration. That he is somebody who found a way to make sure all of us in this country belong. And that you now can take that torch and make sure whether it's in foreign countries, and it definitely is my promise, in India to do that, the most, what will be the most populous country in the world, or in a great city like LA, which is now the third biggest urban economy in the world, um, that we build that world that we want to see. One last thing I want to say um, before I, and I, you'll excuse me, I'm going to miss both the singing and the comedy, which is sounding like it's going to be amazing, but I haven't seen my daughter all week, and so I'm going to go see my wife and daughter. Um, she's been away at camp. I, um, I want you all to be inspired by 2028 here in Los Angeles. My first act, my first week as mayor, actually first day after I paved a street, was to sign a letter to the U.S. Paralympic and Olympic Committee saying that we wanted to pursue a bid to bring the Olympics to Los Angeles for a third time and the Paralympics for the first time. Um, there was the wheelchair race in 1984, which was the first time the Olympics put a Paralympic event and led to the birth of the Paralympic movement. Um, and we're very proud of that history. But I always say the Paralympic and Olympic Games are coming and all the Paralympic uh, organizers are like, we love that you say Paralympics first. And I said, well, it's our first time and it's kind of new and exciting for us to be able to do that. But in six years, America, not just Los Angeles, will host the Paralympic Games and the Olympic Games. And it's an opportunity for us to take these six years to make Los Angeles the most accessible city anywhere in America. To really go deep, whether it's technologically accessible, as we're doing with our departments and our access with the internet, or whether it's in our built landscape and we're building 15 new rapid transit lines in Los Angeles right now, more than any city in the history of the country at one time, but it means nothing if they're not accessible, um, or the way we do urban planning so that people realize that belonging isn't just a phrase, but it's actually reflected in the built environment that we have and in the laws that reinforce that as well. So I can't wait to work for all of you one day. Um, I can't wait to see you be I, I'm just going to be one of your constituents, whether it's in the legal profession or whether it's lawmakers, which I would encourage many of you to think because we have great underrepresentation of lawmakers. Uh, we all have disabilities, but who have 
notable disabilities that are, I think, bringing that perspective directly to lawmaking. So it isn't just always an afterthought, but it becomes cooked in from the beginning. Um, and I can't wait to see you continue to change that world. And I'll end with this. Um, there's a great poem that was uh, written about the Italian um, uh, painter Andrea del Sarto by Robert Browning. And I was reading it a couple weeks ago, and I loved it because it's kind of summarized everything we do in public life. And it said, um, a man's reach must always exceed his grasp. It was written in the 19th century, so let's make it now. A person's reach must always exceed uh, their grasp. And to me, if you think about the struggle that we all have to make this a uh, world of belonging, when you read that history book, it seems so easy. Page 22, slavery ends. And page 48, women get the right to vote. And page 67, farm workers have rights. And page 83, everybody can marry each other. But when you're in the midst of writing those pages or that legislation, we know how painfully those paragraphs are put down on the page, how slow a day can feel. Uh, we wonder, will we ever get there? You think about the slave who fought for his freedom but never experienced it, but his son or daughter did. The woman who moved the suffragette movement forward, suffragist movement, excuse me, forward, but then never could vote, but her granddaughter and great-granddaughter today is. We reach beyond our grasp because just once in a while, we might be able to hold something we think we can't hold. And the second line after that is, after all, what is a heaven for? And I would say, after all, what are we here for if not that? So thank you to the Quillo Fellows. Thank you to Loyola. Thank you, Tony, for your friendship. And I can't wait to see you as leaders of today continue to change this world and build a world of belonging. Thank you all, and have a great evening. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.